Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY, and today we're going to make a downrigger. The first thing we're going to need to do is make the framing for our downrigger. And I got some quarter inch plate to do this. This was generously donated by E&E Metal Fab, located in Lebanon, PA. I'll have their link to their website down in the description below. So what we're going to do is cut this up into pieces first. I clamped a piece of angle iron onto the plate steel and squared it up. That way I ensure that I get clean, smooth cuts. we have our two side plates cut out the next thing we need to do is assemble everything that goes in between so we know how wide to make our base plate now we are going to be using a lawnmower pulley off of a deck for spooling our line on now there's two different types of pulleys that you need to be aware of the majority of your deck pulleys are a two-piece pulley basically they took two pieces of sheet metal wedged them together now this makes a seam on the v-groove and that can have the potential to pinch your line. So you don't want that. Uh, I had to search a while for a one piece and what it is is it has a smooth V channel or U channel in here. That's what you want to go for. Now the hole on this is a lot larger than our bar stock that we're gonna use for our handle. So I went to the hardware store and picked up some fender washers. We're gonna weld that to our pulley and that it's going to fit straight in there and we need to offset our side plates from our pulley so it has some room on either side so I got some spacers so our bar stock goes through there we have another fender washer on the other side and another spacer now you can see on these spacers that there is a hole there that is for an arc clip to go through so it will turn the entire pulley system. So all we need to do is take our pulley, fit it up against. Now we have about an eighth inch of play on either side, which is pretty tight. It is going to make it a little more difficult for us to get those R clips in there. So you can make it a little wider. We are sitting at an inch and seven eighths. So that's pretty narrow. So you can make it a little wider, especially with the spacers to put those R clips. It'll make it a little easier. So we'll go ahead and cut out our base plate. Before we weld up our side plates to our base, we're gonna take our pulley and line it up exactly where we want it and make a punch mark on one of the faces of our side plates. I clamped both plates together and drilled them simultaneously. That way the hole is in the exact same position on both plates. After the pilot hole was drilled, I drilled it the rest of the way with a 3 8 drill bit. Once the side plates are completed, I welded them to the base plate. The base plate I made about 3 inches wide. It's a lot wider than I originally measured, but this will allow me to easily get the pulley in and also to arc clip it and I won't have to fight with such tight tolerances. Next I welded the fender washer and spacer onto the pulley. I had about a 3 inch piece of 3 8 bar stock that I pushed through the pulley to make sure everything lined up perfectly. Okay we're done welding up our frame and our pulley. Next thing to do is start assembling things. We can take our handle and pass it through our frame and center this up uh, punch and drill for the arc clips on the inside to attach the handle to the pulley and then you can uh, drill and pin the outsides and you're done that's the cheapest route to go but the way we're going to do it is a little bit nicer I went out and got some ball bearings now these are going to add to the cost a little bit as they were four dollars each Plus, I think it was like 2 or $3 for the lock collar. We're just going to place these on the outside and tack our lock collar onto our frame. And it's the same thing. We're going to 
drill and uh, R-clip the outsides. That way we can still pull this thing completely apart if need be. It's going to give it a little bit smoother feel than if you would just have it um, like this. Again, it doesn't really matter, but I thought it would make it a little bit nicer. So we'll go ahead and do that. We've got everything pinned up really nice, really smooth operating. I'm happy with this so far. Uh, now we need to be able to reel line out and stop our pulley at a certain depth. So to make our stopping mechanism, we still have a lot of 3 8 bar stock. I got some torsion pins, a bushing, and a spring. And this is what we're going to make our stopping mechanism out of. The next thing you want to do is drill a pilot hole directly below your handle about two to three inches. Go all the way through the side plate and lightly make a mark on your pulley on the inside. Rotate it 90 degrees and make another mark. Rotate it again 90 degrees and make a mark. And then one more time, rotate it 90 degrees and make another mark. So you should have four marks total on your pulley. It should be at 0 degrees, 90, 180, and 270. This will give you four evenly spaced marks to drill out later. You can see here that we have our four marks, and they're all perfectly spaced out. There's no measuring involved at all. So go ahead and drill these out. Drill out your pilot hole with a 3 8 bit, and you can see our bar stock slides through the side plate and catches the pulley on the inside perfectly. There's no measuring involved and everything lines up. Next, weld your bushing onto the side plate. I had the bar stock through the bushing, the plate, and the pulley on the inside to make sure the bushing was perfectly lined up. Take a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder and make a long slot into your bushing. Then turn your angle grinder 90 degrees and place a little dimpled edge into the rim of the bushing. I drilled two holes in the bar stock for our tension pins. The size of the hole is 1 64th smaller in diameter than the tension pins for a good snug fit. Needle nose pliers works great at holding your torsion pins while you hit them into your bar stock. The way the stopping mechanism works is there's a spring on the inside held in place with that torsion pin. All we have to do is pull back on the bar stock twist and it allows this long torsion pin to travel in that slot that we cut. The bar stock then travels in further, catching the pulley on the inside. And this will stop it, and when we want the pulley to freewheel, all we do is pull back on the bar, twist it 90 degrees, and then allow that little dimpled edge to catch the torsion pin. Now what we'll do is we'll cut this bar off right here, and uh, weld a T onto here so it's a little bit easier to pull. I roughly assembled everything and then cut a top plate and pitched it at about 20 to 30 degrees and welded it in place. We got our top plate welded in and this pretty much finalizes our base for our downrigger. The next thing we're going to do is I have a half inch by two foot long black pipe and we're going to weld that to the top here as our rod. And we also have a pulley that can either be welded or bolted to the end. Now one thing with this pulley, I made sure that I got a high shoulder pulley. It has a very deep V groove unlike most pulleys where it's just slightly dished out. The reason being, we're going to get a lot of side load on this sometimes. Say you're making a tight turn with your boat and your downrigger ball is pulling and side loading this pulley it may have a tendency to jump and fall in and wedge in between the wall of your pulley and the side plate here. So we don't want that because you'll have to mess with it. So with that high shoulder on it, it's going to help prevent it from pulling off. So try and find yourself one of these. I welded the pipe to the top plate and also ended up welding the pulley to the bar also because it was a little easier than bolting it. Now that everything is welded up, we're going to break everything down and give it a little paint. Okay, we got some paint on this. I spooled it up with braided line, and I was able to take it up to Lake Raystown. My dad has a pontoon boat, so we sea clamped this to the front, headed down to the dam end, and we dropped an 8-pound ball down to about 130 feet, and we took some laps with it, and it worked out really good. 
stop mechanism held a perfect depth, and um, I'm overall very happy with this build. The only thing I would probably change is our side plates. I would definitely make them a little wider. It was hard to arc clip our pulley to our handle. There wasn't a lot of room. I had to use some needle nose pliers, so that was a little bit of a pain. But um, that's probably the only thing I would change with this. Now, for those guys who don't have weighting, welding capabilities, this is still a viable build for you. Go ahead and make this uh, base out of either plywood or a hardwood, and you can probably still keep the metal rod, um, or you can make it out of an oak dowel rod, would probably work also. So this is still viable for woodworking and for metalwork. So it's definitely an easy build. I'm, I'm very happy with it. And very thankful to e, e Metal Fabrication for supplying the metal. Go ahead and check those guys out. They make some pretty cool stuff. Thanks again, guys, and I hope.